What's up? Welcome to the Line Check Podcast. Today in the studio, I have Aubrey. Hey. She's cracking open a, a water liquid first. death yep. uh, mountain water. It's good. It's hot in here today. It's summer. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my experience with Aubrey. She was one of my first sous chefs at my like first real kitchen job. Uh, definitely showed me the ropes a lot and also... Uh, how to really care about your food Thanks, <laughs> in a man. restaurant where no one else cares about anything. Thanks. So cheers to that. Yeah, cheers, man. Cheers to caring about. Yeah, caring what about. You do. Yeah, exactly. It's um few and far between, but I feel like the industry is taking that on a little bit more, mm -hmm. and you're finding a lot more um intentional places and intentional food where they care about the product they care about the people mm -hmm. so yeah yeah cheers to that yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah it's definitely getting a little bit better in the kitchens these days i would say it's harder to find people but i feel like when you find the right people they stay and yeah. they care about you know what they're doing i've been out of the kitchen game since the pandemic mm -hmm. um so I, it's just, I've heard stories of people that I know that it's just been like the wild, wild west. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that it, it was going or propelling towards a better way of working and living. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit and taken a couple steps back. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it gets better as we keep grow going. And yeah, growing. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, so I currently am working as a associate culinary producer and food stylist in Hollywood. Um, I started doing that during the pandemic. Uh, I was in a kitchen for since 2010. So about a decade. Mm hmm before that 2010 yeah uh, I don't know, yes, man. 23 or not, not 23 years yeah. <laughs> 13 yeah. years <laughs> yeah, about 13 years and um yeah so it's it's a really cool job I really love it it's very different from working in a kitchen mm -hmm. but uh it's you still get to be kind of creative especially when it comes to food styling mm -hmm. uh but yeah that's what I do and it's it's crazy right now. We're on strike. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm a part of a union, but we're below the line workers. So in between the writer's strike and the actor's strike, there's been no union work since March. Mm -hmm. So I've definitely contemplated going back into the kitchen. And I said I would never <laughs> do it again. <laughs> uh, but I mean... You know, I love yeah. I love food. I can't get my hands off of it. So, okay, like what? Where would you choose to cook if you oh go back into the kitchen? Honestly, I I don't know. I'm in the works right now. I was doing during the pandemic something called traveling feasts. Mm -hmm. So I was feeding autoimmune compromised people, like like meals. Mm -hmm. And not just home cooked meals, but a little bit more elevated meals um, that were specific to their dietary needs. And so right now I'm trying to kind of rebrand that into a bi monthly mm -hmm. or monthly meal thing. So if I can maybe get that working, that would be great. But as a kitchen, I, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> really yeah yeah there's yeah there's a lot of choices out there and it's not very not very good uh, yeah it <laughs> seems a little saturated so. it does <laughs> um so when did you first start cooking professionally or <sighs> cooking in general so i first started cooking young um with grandparents mm -hmm. up in upstate new york I was born in LA, but my family always lived in upstate New York. And so we'd go and see them every year. Mm -hmm. And my grandma was like the first 
person to really like throw me in the kitchen and get my hands dirty. And mm -hmm. I just always fell in love with it. Before that, I wanted to be when I was like a little kid, I wanted to be a vet. So it's kind of weird how I transitioned from <laughs> saving animals to actually butchering <laughs> them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been cooking forever. My first job was on a food truck. Um, it's no more. It's called. It was called the Gastro Bus. Mm -hmm. um, and that was in Los Feliz in L.A. And I was just washing dishes, prepping food, really didn't know anything mm -hmm. about professional kitchens. I just, whatever I could get my hands on, I would do. Um, and so I had this really mm -hmm. awesome chef and he taught me the ropes. He taught me how to braise. He taught me how to even sear meats, mm -hmm. uh, pickling, everything, fermentation even, bread making. They did everything. Wow. So that was a little short-lived because I was 19, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, driving to L.A. at 19 was like <laughs> the worst thing ever. How could I do that? So um, after that, I went to... I came to Long Beach and started working at another place that is gone now. And after that, I went to the attic and helped open up that place. And that was like wow. my first dang, my first big one. That's crazy. Yeah, thrown into brunch. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> How many mac and cheese Cheetos did you make? Oh, I have no idea. Like yeah. probably thousands. <laughs> I worked there for almost two years uh -huh. and it was mostly brunch, but they still had that on the brunch menu. Yeah. And the kitchen was maybe seven feet long with a three to four man line. And we would be churning out anywhere from 250 to 400 covers just for brunch. Wow. Um, yeah, it was it was brutal. crazy it was brutal <laughs> but it was some of the best times yeah. of my life yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah brunch was like fun and brutal at the same time like totally. at any brunch at place it worked at, it's like all right you like you know what's gonna happen today yeah. like you you know what's gonna happen it's coming yeah it's you coming. just gotta be ready we and do like it. you do it yeah and then it's like okay at the end of, you're like it's like what, like one p.m. All I'm right, go cool. yeah, I'm gonna, I'm done for the day. I don't gotta, I don't gotta be here tonight. See you guys later exactly. for all you guys coming in. <laughs> I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm out. Sorry. I did the dirty work this yeah. morning. Uh, tried to clean as much as yeah. I could. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny because I always say like, oh, I love brunch, and then thinking about working a brunch service, I just would rather die. <laughs> I really think. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't worked brunch in, in probably like five years. It, you learn speed. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, you learn speed there. That's, I feel like I didn't go to culinary school. So mm -hmm. in every place that I have worked in, I learned a different aspect. And sure, the beginning of my culinary career was a little jumpy mm -hmm. but i took it as and i twisted it as like this is my schooling mm -hmm. like i'm going to learn as much as i can and whatever i feel like i'm not learning anymore or when i'm in my early mm -hmm. 20s i'm bored i want to go somewhere else um i would go so that's how i i filled my bag of tricks by going to different restaurants mm -hmm. and learning whatever i could but working at the attic and working brunch service was learning strictly speed mm -hmm. yeah well let's cheers to that yeah, cheers um beer oh yeah i'll yeah. take a beer yeah, yeah. we have this? uh some ambitious l's Ew. beers got a gondolf the crisp and, and i have a professional human being which is a a ddh hazy ipa don't know what that means but I'm gonna drink it anyways. A professional human being. More than what I Ooh, can say. This for is myself. definitely not a beer that I would drink, but it is good. <laughs> I'm not an IPA person. No, you want to try mine? Sure. You want to switch? I can take it. No, an no. IPA. I just want to wash it down a little bit. Oh, that one, they kind of taste a little bit similar. Really? But I'm also, I'm not a big beer drinker anymore. Okay. I don't really drink beer, but. What do you drink? 
I drink wine okay. and I just don't even drink that much wine. I just kind of like don't even drink because okay. I'm training for a marathon right now. You're training for a marathon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is not something that you would have heard 10 years ago. Oh, as a no. chef is training for a marathon. No. But now I feel like there's a new. Be healthy. Be lifestyle. healthy. Yeah. Straight up. In the mind and in the body. Exactly. I'm all for that. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a birthday gift to myself. Hell yeah! It's like fitness goal. That's wonderful. Yeah. Try to stay healthy because it really does help. Like working in the kitchen, like being fit and healthy, and totally your body takes a toll in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, the fatigue mm-hmm. alone, whether you're healthy or not, like is really mm-hmm. a heavy load. And if your body and mind is healthy, it's easier to carry on and mm-hmm. keep going when you're in the weeds yeah. and you can't like think of anything. You just have to keep going. It's better that you were able to be fit yeah, and not dying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <sighs> it's not good. No. Well, I, I worked at Bavel for a little bit. Oh, wow. And I was getting destroyed over there of course and i was not in shape okay but it, as like i got i've gotten older like it'd be cool to have that job when i was like 18 you know totally um, it's like one of the best yeah but now that eat. i'm like older it's like i can't be doing this shit anymore <laughs> <laughs> i get that <laughs> it's like this is not for me i get that i'm out of my prime yeah totally you would think with what I do, I was like, oh, it's going to be easier. Like, I only have to style some food or go grocery shopping or maybe, like, pick up some equipment. And I'm like, no, that is not what my job is. We're doing that on top of making sure that the set is perfect, making sure our guests are perfect. Mm -hmm. Whoever is on the show, say it's an interview show, a reality TV show, and you're working 12, 14 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, I was wildly mistaken getting into this industry, Mm -hmm. but it is a very different beast than being in the kitchen. So how did you get into that side of cooking, Um, television movies? Do you remember Jay from Padre? Yes, of course. He's an actor. Yes. So during COVID, Jay's wife, Mikkel, Mm -hmm. shout out, um, she hit me up and was like, she has a talent agency, um, our casting agency. Mm -hmm. And she said, I have this show. They're looking for background actors that know how to cook. Would you be down to make, I think it was $350 for the day. And nice. I was like, hell yeah. I'll do anything you want for, th- <laughs> I, I want a, <laughs> no a 24 hour braise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it, during the pandemic, I'm only making uh, unemployment. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, do you want this job? You have to like kind of show these other actors how to look like they're cooking. Mm-hmm. I was like, sure, not a problem. So I ended up being on this show um, as a background actor. What is it called? I forget, honestly. <laughs> it's awful. There's probably I've been, been so many. Um, it. I'll remember it. But it was with Julie Delphi. She was... Um, is it Sex in the City? No, it was before, <laughs> like, before Midnight with Ethan Hawke. It's like an uh, old movie. Okay. Yeah. Wait, is she in Sex in Sex and City, or is no. that somebody else? No, I don't know. That's don't think Julie so. Dreyfus. Dreyfus. Yeah, Dreyfus. I Wrong maybe. person. <laughs> they have seen, I know. Yeah, before midnight. So yeah, um, I was on the show, and there was a food stylist, mm. and I was like, "What are you doing? Is this even a job? Like, I see you're prepping food, but nobody's eating. Mm-hmm. Like." We're I'm literally chopping an onion 40 million times and making it look like I'm actually mm-hmm. cooking. And so she explained it to me. And I was like, how do I do this? This seems amazing. You guys are working through the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It seems like this industry makes a good amount of money. So um, she gave me or I gave her my number mm-hmm. and didn't hear from her for six months. Oh, wow. And I was like, OK, like whatever shot in shot in the dark 
And then six months later, she calls me and goes, hey, are you still interested in doing this? Uh, I have a show that I need an assistant on and it's called Fast Foodies and it's on True TV. And I was like, sure, I don't know anything about this. She's like, I'll teach you. And so we were on that show and from there it just kind of took off. She put me on, her name's Sarah. Mm -hmm. She put me under her wing and like taught me everything. And it was really just like that. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like really, really, really lucky to even be in this industry because it's so niche mm -hmm. and weird and like you don't know you don't know that it's even a thing yeah but yeah it's that's, that's crazy it. yeah. that's super cool too through the owner of the restaurant we yeah were at, yeah which is really wow. cool yeah like a yeah like thanks a little jay circle yeah um so tell us about the stuff that you can say on camera okay um i work with some famous chefs mm -hmm. I've worked on a couple of Gordon Ramsay shows. He's great. Um, he's not like the awful person that he's portrayed in his younger days. Mm -hmm. I think when you watch the shows too, you see that like age changes. Oh people. yeah, yeah. He's definitely changed a lot. A hundred percent. He's like super family yeah. man too. Oh, yeah. He's got like three kids or four kids. I think it's five. Five. Yeah. Wow. Um, he just had one recently. Oh, dang. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Still true. <Get> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I've worked on a couple of his shows. Mm -hmm. Those were really fun. Um, one of my favorite shows that I worked on was last year, a show called Selena Plus Chef. Mm -hmm. And we got to, like, kind of work in a house in Malibu, mm -hmm. which was really cool because I got paid to just, like, go to the beach uh -huh. every day <laughs> and, like style food and like it was kind of through zoom mm -hmm. so it was it's just awesome um i'm trying to think of some other things i've also worked on um as like a props person um and a food stylist assistant to different tv shows scripted mm -hmm. not just reality yeah. um the morning show jennifer aniston mm -hmm. and reese witherspoon i worked on your honor I don't know if you've seen that show with Brian Cranston. Oh, yeah. That's on Showtime. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Winning Time, the newest season that's coming out. Oh, yeah. About yeah. the Lakers. Yeah. Oh, oh, cool. It's crazy working on. It's all a, like 70s. Yeah, yeah. 80s. So that's like one of the most difficult things to do mm. is work on period pieces that aren't like up to date. No. So they because you have to, you have to source everything. Different. Yeah. The food looks different, the clothing looks different, the sets look different, the props look different, yeah. and sourcing all of it, like you have to do prop With houses those, or like you vintage, have like vintage like exactly. dining wear, place wear and all everything. It's all expensive, yeah. you know? So um, probably one of the coolest things I've gotten from a compliment from working on the shows is Adrian Brody on that show. Yeah. So that I made him the best BLT he's ever had Whoa, in his life. Dang. I'm like, that's four ingredients, dude. But hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you like yeah, it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was watching this video on YouTube about like um, food through like decades. Yeah. And how it's like changed a lot so and much. like the trends of food have changed. And it's like so weird. It like, is. Like food, like through different periods of time. Absolutely. So I can see that being like super difficult. It it was. <laughs> but like it, there was a scene where I had to do like a, apparently back in the day they had um, food on airplanes, like food carts. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And so I had to... I, I was working as assistant, so I didn't make the food, but I had to style it mm. of this food that I didn't know what it was supposed to look like. So I was scrambling on my phone, looking up first class 1960s airplane food. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find anything. So I just, I just winged it. Mm -hmm. Like I just won it. Like I didn't know what to do. They were happy with it. So... Yeah. We'll see what I mean, if they didn't know. Yeah. You know. 
We'll see, we'll see when the season comes out if yeah. they cut the scene completely or not. Uh, yeah. yeah, airplane food is weird. I mean, it was it's like it was I don't even. Crazy. Yeah, it's just like a cart. Yeah, they had back in the day. Like if you look it up online, they have like, like Pan Am or something exactly, like that. Exactly, like these lavish mm. with like deviled eggs and like weird pork steaks yeah. and like all this stuff that. I mean, devil eggs are delicious, yes. but but like other stuff that you would never eat. Yeah. Ambrosia salad, like sorry, if you like <laughs> ambrosia salad, like you're weird. <laughs> this is gross. Um, but it, it's just it was wild. Yeah. So the period piece things are are really cool, but really insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. And then I worked on the pizza. Oh yes, we're gonna get into that. Yeah. So. Here, you just tell everybody. No, you okay, so <laughs> so uh, if anybody was watching the Super Bowl, I don't know. Does, does everybody watch Super Bowl? I honestly uh, didn't yeah. even know that the commercial was on the Super Bowl until someone told me. <laughs> so I, I love football, and I watch the Super Bowl, and okay. everyone in America watched the Super Bowl. But anyways, <laughs> uh, Domino's. It's Domino's, right? Mm-mm. Pizza Hut? Papa John. Pizza Hut. Uh, Pizza Hut. Damn, disrespect. Dang, I, I love Domino's. <laughs> that's why. Um, no, pizza Hut. Okay, so Pizza Hut uh, made the biggest pizza in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, world's largest. Yeah, world world's largest pizza, pizza. ever. Yeah. And Aubrey was one of the chefs making the pizza. I was. Out of how many people? <laughs> so the team, the, there was a chef team. Uh-huh. And then they contracted companies to have temps. Mm-hmm. Come and help. So we had to make this pizza in 72 hours in the LA Convention Center. Um, it had to, there was a lot of like precautions that we had to take. Temperature had to be a certain temperature mm-hmm. for it to be the world's Guinness. So it's still edible. Yeah. Because once we're done with the pizza, it has to be edible. Yeah, it has to be eaten. It has to be eaten. It has to be cooked. And when you think about it, how are you going to cook the world's largest pizza? Like, it, I don't know. So it was a team of, I believe, eight chefs. Um, one of them, or multiple, more, multiple of them were my friends, mm-hmm. but... The one leading it was my friend Jamie Lauren. She was on Top Chef. Mm -hmm. Top Chef? Sorry if it's not Top (laughs) Chef. Um, And so she created this team. And what we had to do was we had this frozen dough pucks. They were in rounds. And they had to be sheeted or like pressed Mm -hmm. down into squares. Par cooked. And then, or docked, then par cooked. Then we take all of the par-cooked pizza and we lay it onto the area where the pizza's being measured. Mm -hmm. Then we carefully bind the par-cooked pizza dough with the other par-cooked pizza dough, put sauce, cheese, and two kinds of pepperoni. And so this was supposed to be um, a bunch of like I think it's called like the Big Brooklyn or mm-hmm. the Big New Yorker. Um, so that's what the Big New Yorker is. Square, sauce, cheese, two types of pepperoni. So we did that for 72 hours straight. Wow. No stopping. There were different teams morning, mid, night. I was a mid. So I was there for morning mm-hmm. and night. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was crazy. Like... I maybe stretched a couple thousand pieces of pizza dough. Dang. We were on our hands and knees making sure that everything was perfect. Um, it was it was crazy. The YouTuber that sponsored it, his name was Arac. Mm-hmm. Never heard of no, him. No, I have no idea. No, because I'm not like a YouTuber. Yeah, I'm, me either. <laughs> I work in kitchens. Like, yeah. I don't have time for this shit. And so... He sponsored it because he wanted to do like the world's largest pizza party Mm -hmm. and the world's largest pizza. And we did it Mm -hmm. like we made it and we did it. 
And the coolest part about this whole thing, it was grueling. It was backbreaking. It was exhausting. I think I cried multiple times of just like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I doing why this? Why am I making a giant pizza? It, what? Like, why? <laughs> but the best part is that we got to, instead of scratching it all, we then disassembled it because it was able to eat. Mm-hmm. And we donated all of the pizza to food banks all over LA County. Wow. So that Wonderful. was, it was worth it. Mm-hmm. As much as I hated it during it it was worth yeah every minute of it donate it yeah Yeah, totally that's awesome yeah um how was it cooked though okay yeah it was wasn't it like a giant like like propeller or something like the pizza zamboni (laughs) no so you know those push carts that you get at caught or uh home depot Uh so they had a couple of those and they fastened these outdoor heaters the Mm. like long ones and so they fastened multiple of them on the side of that cart. And the prop master did mm-hmm. all of this. He's a genius. Seriously, like genius. And so we did it two rows at a time. And then they would follow us as we're assembling and cook the pizza. Wow. And because it was so low to the ground, it's like being in an electric pizza yeah. oven. And so it was cooked. Wow. It was crazy. Dang. <laughs> it was so crazy like i can't believe i've done that yeah yeah and, and how big was the pizza again oh my gosh i don't know uh, you guys just gotta have to look it up yeah, it's a I very know. big pizza it was it's in huge. one of the halls of um the la convention center it filled it mm-hmm. okay yeah it's, it's very large I probably should have looked this up before <laughs> i got on that sorry <laughs> it's okay <laughs> um so for all our podcasts, we always ask everybody their favorite in the weed story. Okay. I'm excited to hear yours because I'm sure you have lots of different versions of in the weeds being in a kitchen or being a food stylist or making a giant pizza. My favorite? I have a I have a ton. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, I, I thought about this because I've listened to all of your podcasts mm-hmm. and... I have two. I have one when I worked at Spago for the brief time. Fine dining. If you guys don't know what Spago is, it's Wolfgang I, Puck's yeah. like first big restaurant. It's not as fancy as it used to yeah. be, but it's still still pretty cool. Um, we were closing, and a, a service at Spago was like four to five hundred a night. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. Like you do not stop. You do not pee. You do not do anything except for cook. Mm-hmm. And you cannot run out of your prep. Like you can't. There's, it's not going to happen because it's a well-oiled machine. We're finishing up. We are running low on everything. We have like five minutes left of service. And we get a call from the front saying that there's a birthday party coming in. And we were just like kind of confused, like what in a private dining room, like birthday party. And I'm like, yeah, birthday party. And I was like, okay. It ended up being Stevie Wonder's daughter (laughs) was coming in with 25 people to have her birthday party at 1030 at night. No call, no reservations, nothing. So us non, like, chef de parties, like, mm-hmm. people below the line, no sous chefs or anything, are, they're almost, they're pretty much gone. Are like, what What do we do? And thank goodness for our executive chef and our chef de cuisine was still there. Mm-hmm. Um, we managed to somehow make a menu for them. So we're getting whatever we can, getting all of our extra protein seared off so we could like mm-hmm. get them ready. Um, and then we find out that they're all vegan. <laughs> so we have to pivot. And not only are they all vegan, they want a vegan cake for the birthday. <laughs> and we're working at Spago. You don't say no to Stevie Wonder's mm-hmm. daughter. Like, oh, 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 
what do you do? We ended up doing it, but it was like in the weeds of like a scramble. Yeah. More of not so much of in the weeds like, oh shit, but it was. Mm -hmm. My other one was when I worked at the attic. Again, like I was saying, young buck, 21, line of four people. They were all my best friends. We would go drink every day. And um, I came in. I actually posted a photo the other day of me that day, very <laughs> wildly hungover. <laughs> and um, it was a day where it was like a bunch of a bunch of big tops, like a twelve, a party of twelve, a party of eight, a party of six, a party of six, a party of six, like so mm -hmm. much. And we're running out of food. It's a Sunday. We shouldn't be running out of food. Mm. I'm I'm sweating. My best friend that was working the line keeps going to the bathroom because she keeps vomiting because she's so hungover. And all of a sudden, our executive chef, who usually wasn't there in the morning, mm. walks in. And I'm looking at her like deer in the headlights. She's like, hey, what's going on? How's it going? Seeing that it looks like there was an earthquake, <laughs> like 7.3 eggshells everywhere batter like probably behind my ear it was a hot mess and so she gets on the line with us and is starting to cook and kind of crazy she was she was wild yeah um maggie comes back she's she's like kind of freaking out yeah. seeing that what's she doing here she she was vomiting in the yeah. bathroom and she's like what is she doing here like uh, so we're trying to cover up that we're stretching our egg batter mm -hmm. for our french toast yeah. and trying to like kind of hide yeah that we clearly didn't prep enough because we were hung over yeah. but also just weren't working in the best way mm -hmm. possible um and then the shoe drops and she goes into her low boy and finds shots of fireball because we were drinking the hair of the dog. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> and um, you would think that all hell broke loose. But she ended up reaching down, taking the shot, and being like, all right, motherfuckers, let's go. And helped us get out of it. Wow. But, like, thinking about it, I was yeah. like, I was like, I'm going to get fired. Yeah. I, I don't know what to do. Like, she, she said, all right, let's do this. Like, took the shot. Shocked. After that, we were, I was like, oh, I don't know. Still don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know if I want to work here anymore. But <laughs> it, it was it was crazy. It was a lot of fun. Like like I said, that restaurant was some of the best times mm -hmm. of my life. Yeah. So well, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers to that. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on the Thanks. podcast. Thanks so much me. fun. Yeah. Uh, brings back good old times. Yeah. You know? Sweet Padre. Yeah, sweet Padre. Oh, my goodness. R.I.P. It's getting it's still there, guys. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's still there, guys. Um, yeah. Anyways, cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope you guys all have a good time. And uh, watch uh, some food cooking channels and check out Winning Time.